South Africa's public protector has been sacked. We speak to Paul Hoffman of Accountability Now. Welcome, Paul. Good day, Chris, and good day to your Biz News tribe as well. What are Chapter 9 institutions and why do we have them? Well, the founders of the New South African Order were quite a canny bunch, and they recognized that the people of South Africa uh, were used to being in an authoritarian order where a bald-headed man with a very long finger would tell everybody what to do, and everybody would do what he told them to do, and there was uh, a, a lot of uh, passive um, subject kind of attitude in the populace of South Africa, and this needed to be changed. The idea of the Chapter 9 institutions is to bed down constitutional democracy in the new South Africa. That is done through a, a variety of institutions, the most important of which are the Office of the Public Protector, the South African Human Rights Commission, the Independent Electoral Commission that is meant to ensure free and fair elections, but never actually has, and the uh, Auditor General who make sure that money in, in the, that belongs to the public is spent for the public benefit and has uh, his or her hands full with that job from time to time. So our interest today is in the Office of the Public Protector, uh, specially created like an ombud, but not quite like an ombud, because the public protector has jurisdiction over the affairs of state, over the public administration, and in terms of the Executive Ethics Act, is the policeman of the executive branch of government. Deal with matters on their own initiative or because somebody has complained, uh, uh, investigate them, report on them, and take binding remedial action. That is what gives the public protector teeth that the other uh, Chapter 9 institutions uh, can only envy. And the, the idea behind that was to make sure that there would be no maladministration in the new South Africa, that everybody would paint within the lines of the Constitution, that procurement would, would be uh, regular and constitutional, and that the public servants would take their obligations, duties under the Constitution seriously. So the, um, the, the Office of the Public Protector is really a, a very important one, and like all the other Chapter 9 institutions, it is accessible by the public for free. You don't have to pay to get the public protector to look into a complaint. For you. And that uh, it does tend to promote the form of active citizenship that was absent in the old authoritarian regime and ought to be cultivated now that we have a supreme constitution under the rule of law. And uh, that is that is what is uh, is meant by having these uh, these institutions, which are not shared by by all the world. And certainly, a public protector is an innovation of our constitution, of which we ought to be proud. What are the characteristics of a good public protector? Well, the office of the public protector is enjoined by the constitution to act independently in fulfilling its mandate. It is protected by the Constitution against interference from other institutions, and the person who is the leader of the Office of the Public Protector has to be someone with the a fit and proper person with the necessary integrity and qualifications. Qualifications are that you should have practiced law or been a lawyer for at least 10 years, and that you should be in good standing and that you should have some background in the type of work that the public protector's office is required to. Former public protectors have become judges and professors, and one actually retired when he was finished. But that, that is the, the caliber of person that ought to have the probity and integrity to lead the office in the way that the Constitution contemplates. So how did our impeached and sacked public protector uh, 
get to be appointed in the first place. The appointment process is one that is, is dealt with by a special parliamentary committee. People who are interested in becoming the public protector uh, make application and the applications are then vetted, sorted, shortlisted, and the shortlisted candidates get interviewed by the uh, parliamentary committee. When Advocate Mkwabani was a candidate, she had a very, very impressive PowerPoint presentation, which she understood how to, to use, unlike many people in law who don't uh, uh, adapt to uh, computers. And she beat out two judges, two sitting judges of the High Court, who were also shortlisted as candidates. In fact, a lot of people thought that Judge Siraj Desai of the Cape High Court was a shoe-in for the position, but it turns out that he was just the stalking horse for Nkwabani, and Nkwabani was the candidate favoured by uh, President Zuma, who was the president at the time and who is the person, the president is the person who, who makes the appointment and, as we see now with Nkwabani, dis disappoints the, uh, the public protector when, uh, when impeached. So she... Uh, was not a universally seen as a fit and proper uh, person for the job. The DA, in fact, voted against uh, Busisiwi and Kobani. They felt that she, were, she had too much of a, uh, a record of a service in the public administration, which tended to suggest that um, she was just another deployed cadre of the ANC rather than an independent uh, functionary who would be able to acquit herself of the task. She's also never really practiced law, which is not uh, not 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 something that uh, counted in her favour. But as is often the case in politics, and given that Azuma made the biggest mistake of his political career when he appointed Tuli Marotsela, who created the Zondo Commission for him and had him relieved of his post uh, a year earlier than he should have been, he was not going to do that again. And he wanted a safe pair of hands, an executive-minded person, and that is what he got in the form of Busisiwe M. Kuban. Uh, when did it first become clear that she was not fit and proper for the job? Well, I'm afraid to say that that was within two months of her appointment. In January 2017, no? It's a long time ago. We had occasion to write to the Justice Portfolio Committee about her. And um, th there's a link to it. If you go onto the Accountability Now website and just put public protector complaint into the search engine on the home page, you will, you will find the, the detail of the correspondence. Might be quite nice to put that link on your, on your uh, website when, link to this interview. Because it does, it, it does make for interesting reading. We had complained about the state security agency not following through on raking back the loot of the dying days of apartheid. They hadn't done their job properly. As far as we were concerned, we complained about that. And she somehow turned that complaint into the opportunity to repurpose the Reserve Bank and to order Absa Bank to pay 3.2 billion rand of, of loot back to, to the state. Needless to say, she was taken on review, and uh, she lost the review. She was re uh, exposed as lying on oath by uh, Judge Compepe in uh, the majority judgment in the Constitutional Court, and she slid downhill from there. Our complaint in January 2017 to the Justice Portfolio Committee, which is its, uh, the oversight body of the Office of the Public Protector, was, look out, this woman has been caught lying to us. She denied that she'd prepared a preliminary report. The preliminary report was out in the public domain and was given to us by Karen Morn, who is famous for other reasons, but certainly in our book, she's famous for setting us that preliminary report, together with a covering letter signed by Busasiwe M. Kubani, addressed to the president and giving him a little preview of the 
of, of the uh, report which she was going to uh, produce. Now, uh, th th there were signs of incompetence and there were signs of mendacity, and we uh, gave her the opportunity to explain herself. We asked her a lot of questions, which she, if she had an innocent explanation, she would have answered, and she said, I can't investigate myself. Report me to uh, Parliament, my oversight body. Now, she did that because she knew that she was royal game flying under the wing of Jacob Zuma and that the ANC-dominated uh, parliamentary committee was going to do nothing about it. And that is, in fact, what happened. So it took a couple more years before the DA got sufficiently exercised about the matter for it to take up the cudgels in relation not only to that matter but to many more that uh, gave evidence of her lack of appreciation of the legal principles involved, uh, lack of competence in, in running her office properly, and her lack of integrity. And that led to that very long process where a panel uh, of parliamentarians um, looked into a, a report that she, wa she was indeed not a fit and proper person and eventually came to the conclusion that she should not be allowed to... Uh, to, um, to continue in office. Parliament agreed this week, last week to, to it, and the, the net result is that uh, the president must dismiss her, and if I understand the news of the day properly, he has dismissed her. So that has implications for her pension and her gratuity, but it does relieve us of a public protector who should never have been a public protector and who did not have the uh, level of independence, uh, probity, and integrity that one expects from a person tasked with keeping the affairs of state and the public administration on the state uh, on the straight and narrow, and of policing the Executive Ethics Act, which is a, a very important task that has been put on that office. How did she last uh, in office for one thousand seven hundred days? She was protected by the ANC. If the Justice Portfolio Committee had done its work properly, she would have been put on the carpet and asked to answer the questions that we posed in the letter we wrote to her in January 2017. And that would have exposed her as mendacious and incompetent. But because she was protected by the ANC until it eventually became apparent even to the ANC, that, uh, th that she was not a fit and proper person. Um, the, the, the tide turned against her. But even up until fairly recently, there were members of the ANC who were uh, defending her positions. And uh, as, as recently as 2020, uh, Jesse Duarte was saying, well, we haven't really taken a position in relation to this. <laughs> I think it's, yeah seized with a complaint about it since 2017. So um, it's really, it's not, uh, it does not uh, redound to the credit of Parliament that Parliament took so long to, um, to actually get to grips with what could have been a clean, simple, short, she's lied on oath, she's been caught lying on oath, she's lied to accountability now in relation to that preliminary report, she's not the kind of person we want for our public protector. And she would have been gone within a year, never mind all those thousands of days that she actually did serve. I believe it cost uh, 160 million to get rid of her. No, it cost 30 million to get rid of her. And the office of the public protector has been numbered with adverse costs awards to the tune of 160 million rand. So we are now pushing towards 200 million rand. And, and of course, in some of those costs awards, the courts were so disgusted with her behavior that they made personal costs awards against her and those withstood appeal on every occasion. So she has got a, a liability for portion of the, the costs that have been incurred along the way while the, um, the uh, public protector has been allowed to continue in office way past what should have been a sell-by date sometime in 2017.
Now, what are the prospects for her anointed successor now? Well, she her first uh, task, having risen to the top of the pile of the current applicants, and there were no judges among the applicants this time, which is a pity because uh, it, it is the sort of job that a, a senior judge might be able to acquit him or herself of with a plong. No judges put their hands up on this occasion, having seen two uh, spurned on the previous occasion. And in fact, the, the quality of the candidates uh, was, was, was really not up to the standard that one would expect of the, uh, the, 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 the job description in the Constitution. And um, the acting public protector who's been acting since um, Cyril Ramaphosa suspended Busasi William Kobani about a year ago. Uh, she has occupied the inside lane and seems to be the favoured candidate. It remains to be seen whether 60% of the members of the National Assembly on the 21st of September vote in her favour. And if they do, she will succeed because I'm sure that the president is very happy to have a public protector who exonerates him on the goings on at Parla Parla. So <laughs> I, um, I anticipate that there are going to be problems in the, uh, the, the next public protector's term of office, which is a fixed term seven year appointment, because she is executive minded. Her career record points to her, like Busiziwi M. Kobani, being a deployed cadre of the National Democratic Revolution, marching to the sound of a drum that has absolutely nothing to do with constitutional principles and everything to do with seizing, as uh, Anthea Jeffrey has told you, and Alec, hegemonic control of all the levers of power in society. And obviously, the public protector uh, has control of some very important levers of power, both as policeman to uh, the Executive Ethics Act and uh, because of the constitutional mandate to keep affairs of state and the public administration on the straight and narrow. So um, I, I hope that we do not find ourselves in a situation where um, the new public protector does not rise above her deployed cadre status of the past, and um, she does, in fact, get herself uh, doing the work on, uh, to the standard that Tudi Madonsela was, was, was able to maintain throughout her seven-year um, term of office. It, it, it will depend on whether, she can, whether our new public protector can shake off the uh, shackles of being one of Menzi Similani's acolytes and of being special advisor to several ANC uh, cabinet members along the way. It, it tends to suggest that she is executive minded and that she is, does not have the independence that the office requires, but that doesn't mean that she won't rise to the occasion. You know, in the apartheid era, judges were point, appointed because uh, the National Party cabinet ministers thought that they would be a safe pair of hands for the National Party. Lo and behold, five minutes later, they were assuming that they were appointed on merit and they were acting as though they were appointed on merit. Maybe that will happen with our new public protector too. Thank you. That was Paul Hoffman of Accountability Now speaking to Biz News following the sacking of the public protector. Thank you, Paul. 